people serve to explain scientific things. And behind that question is a statement that is often made that the Bible is not a textbook of science. And of course that is true. I have never taught calculus from the book of Leviticus, and I never shall. It's not designed to teach us science. In fact, it tells us why. Because the Genesis account informs us that God told the first humans to name the animals. That's taxonomy. It is the beginnings of biology, but more fundamental still. Taxonomy is the fundamental intellectual discipline. Whether you work in the sciences or the humanities or in commerce or in nursing or in any area of life, you've got to learn many new words. That's taxonomy. And the Genesis story is clearly saying, to humans, this is a wonderful universe. Please, you go and explore it. You give it the name. And that's real fun to do that. I've done it for most of my life. So that's point number two. Point number three is this. That although the Bible is not designed to teach us details of science, it is not, as Stephen Jay Gould once said, that science is here, the Bible is here and there is no overlap. There is clearly overlap at a few places. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is a statement about the physical universe that science studies. The same universe that is described in this question, the Big Bang. And the question was, does it give evidence of the existence of God? Well, indirectly it does. Because the Big Bang, as you will probably know, is a label on a mystery. Fred Hoyle, who coined the phrase Big Bang, didn't believe in it. And that's why he said, you and your Big Bang. He believed in the steady state of the universe. So Big Bang simply means there was a beginning to space-time. That's exactly what the Bible has been saying, using different words, but has been saying it for several thousand years, actually. And it's interesting because I received this question not long ago at a very prestigious gathering of physicists and philosophers and mathematicians at a famous um, physical laboratory in Europe and I don't know what it was I said but one of the physics professors interrupted me and he said please tell us you were joking when you said that the Bible could inform us in any way as to issues in science I said I was not joking let me give you a simple example the statement in Genesis, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, is, of course, pre-modern science. It was written thousands of years ago. But, dare I suggest to you, that if instead of for centuries listening to Aristotle and his ideas of an eternal universe, you had taken the biblical worldview seriously, you might well have looked for evidence for a beginning before you did. You see, you can actually base a prediction, two predictions, very important predictions, on the text of Scripture. One is that science can be done. In fact, God commanded it. Secondly, it claims there was a beginning. Well, you can explore that. So my answer to the question is, you need to be very careful because science mainly deals with the, ver with the how questions 
and the why questions of function, it doesn't deal with the big questions of agency and purpose and so on, which actually are the most important questions. And the father of modern science, Roger Bacon, once wrote that God had two books, the book of nature, the book of God's world, and the book of God's word, the Bible. And an educated person needed to be acquainted with 